Well, my kids love their guinea pig, Root Beer. He's a fantastic pet, but maybe not as amazing as one heroic gerbil, who he's reading about right there, Jet the Gerbil, had such a storied life, his owner had to make it into a children's book. 40 years later, I had a chance to talk to the author, Michael Keller. I love this because we have a guinea pig in our house, and so anything that's, that's got stories along that is, is really cool. And this is kind of a true story, right? It's based on a true story? Not just kind of, it is a true story. Well, tell me about it. Yeah, this is a crazy story. Now, I'll probably avoid the, the absolute spoiler, but everything that is written in that book occurred. It is a true story about what unfolded back in the 70s in New Jersey when I was growing up, and I had a long succession of gerbils. And this last gerbil, he was just a great one. Um, just the best of all my gerbils, so to speak. Yeah. And everything that unfolded, all the events, all of his skills, his talents, and his various adventures, they all happened for real, including his battle with a cat and then a crazy incident with a household appliance. What made you decide to want to write a book about Jet? <laughs> yeah, it's not every day you make a decision to write a story about a gerbil, is it? Um, <laughs> So I, uh, I've been an executive for most of my life slash career, and I left Pearson Candy Company as CEO about two years ago. Needed a break, needed a big brain break. I've been working for 17 and a half years straight between Dairy Queen and Pearson's. And it sort of got in my head that maybe writing a book during this break would be a good thing to do. And I was exploring various topics. And I had always wanted to take this story, which had been told orally for mm -hmm. generations in my family, including my telling and my father's telling, and commit it to paper and really in, and do so in a way that uh, we get the book out in time for my father to enjoy it. He's 84, and um, he's always been amused by the story. He's made up all kinds of endings to it that don't actually exist, but he's very amused by the story, and I wanted him to enjoy it, and that's what led me to the timing. What was the process like for you from taking it from your oral history to paper? Oh, that's a great question. It is quite a process. I don't think I fully understood everything that's involved in writing a book, let alone a children's book. You know, the, the benefit of a children's book is it's shorter, but with those fewer words, you have to choose your words more carefully. And then you have the illustration, which is a whole different sort of mode of storytelling. The two have to blend together. First thing I had to decide to do, Dave, was um, whether I was going to self-publish or see if I could get myself published. But getting published requires an agent. And I was new to the field and I wanted to get this story rolling. So I decided to go the self-publishing route, which is when I found Wise Inc, Creative Publishing. They're sort of a self-publishing services firm and they helped me with editors and illustrators and book designers and finding the printer. They really helped sort of manage the project through the process. Um, so for two years, we've been at it. Jet has a very distinctive look to him. Was it was it hard to get the illustrator to get the look right of Jet, how you remember him in your head? That's a fantastic question. That was one of the harder things to do. Yeah. Not because the illustrator wasn't wildly talented. It's because I had to describe this vision I had of my gerbil from mm -hmm. 40 years ago or so. It's, he still stands out as sort of a hero in my head. So one of the things we did was we looked for illustrators who had styles similar to my sort of imagination of Jet. And once we had a, an illustrator, in this case, a wildlife watercolor artist of all things, um, then we were well inside the ballpark. And then it was just a matter of trading photos and having a few yeah. conversations yeah. and sort of working our way there. As a parent of small kids, I, I love books that are fun, but also teach some lessons as well along the way, which certainly Jet does. What do you hope that kids take away, and parents for that matter, after they read the, after they read the book? Yeah, there are some good things tucked in there. Um, probably chief among them would be this concept of hope mm -hmm. and also grit and resilience. You know, I certainly maintained hope for Jet's survival. Uh, Jet himself showed a lot of grit and resilience throughout the story. And those three things in particular feel very relevant for today. You know, we're coming out of COVID sort of. And here's a bit of a story about a little furry fellow who managed to survive against all odds. And so there's a little bit of a hope, grit, and resilience story. Michael Keller, thank you so much for talking about this. I appreciate it. What a great, fun story. You are welcome. Thanks for having me. And it was a lot of fun to read through in our house. And here's something very cool as well. A portion of the proceeds from book sales will be donated to Young Authors Publishing, which is a nonprofit that publishes books with and for children of color to help get their voices out in the world. 
You can meet Michael at his book event this Thursday, May 6 at Wild Rumpus Bookstore at 6 p.m. There is a link to sign up and attend on care11.com and I highly recommend you do it.